Your right, all. So this is uh, this. So this is a pillbox. One of eighteen thousand constructed by the War Office in nineteen forty. Uh, I'm just giving reading area. So basically, it's for the um, Dad's Army type of you know, the home defence. Let's see if I can see anything in there. Might be able to get in. To be fair, this is um, the train station, and that's what it looks like from the outskirts. I'll see if I can go in there. Oh, I'm not fucking crawling through that. It's a lot lower than it actually looks on the video. It's like knee, knee length. I'm not risking that because it's like bits of wood in there. I'll have a look through the um through here. Yeah, it's probably about like for a little little boy really the size of it. Yeah, it's a bit of interest. Alright, so this is uh old Buckingham and this is where the castle moat would have been. Mm. Or dug out along here. Quite deep, probably. I don't know. 10, 15, nah, it's gonna be more than that. 15, 20 foot, I reckon. Drop either side. <coughs> and uh, just up ahead is the castle itself. It's quite a good angle there through the trees, like a little tunnel leading to it, something like Alice in Wonderland or something. I'm generally convinced the way it was just standing there looking at me that it was like a stuffed animal, like a sheep in the centre of the village. But yeah, it turns out it wasn't. Oh, go in there, see what's in there. <clears throat> Something you'll find in uh, East Anglia, Essex. Uh, they didn't really have the same building materials like they have up north, so a lot of the buildings are a lot softer. When they do have solid buildings, they're often um, sort of clumped together rocks I would imagine they pulled them across from like from the coast and then you know like sort of stuck them all together maybe using sand materials obviously you build with materials that are around you that are available so let's have a look at there it's cool it's like a little maze As long as I don't bump into some smack head in there or something. Almost looks like a giant spaceship or something, doesn't it? Funny noises coming from over there. Really deep moat just inside of me, I just didn't realise. Same sort of size as um, Dane's Dyke up in Flamborough, East Yorkshire. I do love this out here in the countryside. I like urban photography, is great, like for I don't know, the fast pace to the order. It's just something about being in the woods. Lovely. Yeah, you're looking a good uh, 40 feet, I reckon, down there. Quite a clever little uh, defensive position that they set up. Um, so anyone coming up here, you could put loads of obstacles in the way. What's that down there? Yeah, there's a deer down there. Yeah, so you could put loads of obstacles in the way, obviously, along this route up. Would have been a tough climb up as well. Um, I mean obviously you've got to get up here, could be guards patrolling around, more obstacles and um, if it all goes wrong you've got that big fallback position as the, uh, in the form of the castle there.
Come across a little hedge, hedgehog here. Let's get him off the road eh? Don't know if I covered this in a uh, in a different video, but if you just look at the way this tree kind of just goes off in all angles, I so, sort of think the way we live nowadays, you know, in like civilization, you know, the Roman system we live in, the cube, you know, like the cube system, work in a cube, live in a cube, and it's got to have an impact on your brain eventually. Um, and you look at the way nature kind of grows, and it just goes all over the place and does what it wants. I don't know, I just wonder if, it has a, if we had to stay with nature, it would have been more, a better impact on our brains, you know, like, um, more, I don't know, what's the word, more dynamic, more free in thinking. But obviously it's like the old saying, isn't it, live, you know, don't think outside the box, or, or in other cases, think outside the box, like this. But yeah, it's rumbling shite, perhaps, but it's just a thought. And, uh, that's pretty much it for today, I think. Not too sure what I'm going to do now, I've either got to find a hotel. I can't decide what I'm doing, so I have a great yarmer for sharing them tomorrow, I think, so... Yeah. It's the last days of summer, so there's plenty of, uh, last opportunities, really. Last carnivals, last festivals. So... Yeah, that's it. It's a bit weird. Almost looks well shot, does. Core blasts you are, are going too fast. Core blasts you are going too fast. Fair enough. Got you now. You're right, all. So I went up to this in Norfolk today and uh, also pushed on a bit further towards Buckingham Castle. Did old and new Buckingham. Very small villages and um, I had intended to go to Attleborough and Wilmington but the time was just running out. Uh, obviously in today's, well, where we are in the, in the annual season, it's, you know, nights are drawing in, time's getting less and less now, so uh, I had to call it a day. Um, I think the main talking point for today, with reflection, well, first of all, my disc photo album is finished now. I needed some final photos for that road in, uh, into the town, because there's quite a few things along there I'd noticed that, you know, were worth documenting and photographing. But the most important thing I want to talk about was um, there was a woman I was chatting to and I won't narrow down who it was because I could quite easily do so but I don't want to get into any trouble obviously. But we were chatting and she was telling me about the the migrants had moved into a hotel in Dis. I think it might be Park Hotel. I was really tempted to go and have a little wander around with my camera see if I could get any reactions or interactions. But... Um, I started telling her, it's initially I was kind of saying, oh, these pe so there's some people out there to say these people are like UN soldiers, and when they get a chance, you know, they're going to, um, when the government gets a chance, they're going to kind of like use them to enforce lockdowns, checkpoints, because they won't get the British Army to do it, obviously, so that's why they've imported these foreigners from the Middle East and Africa, who'd have no problems whatsoever, because they already are doing it with insecurity, it's security forces of it mainly employ employing uh, third world migrants into these positions so already the native population of this country is more than prepared to do what they're told by these people and um, she uh, initially she uh, you know she kind of uh, sort of went along with it she was quite uh, interested and um, then I kind of let loose that basically that's what I believe as well and it turns out she knew about the 15 minute cities as well and yeah you know and it, it was we're back and forth in and kind of like agreeing on most of these possibilities could happen within the next year or two uh you know i mean who would have thought you need to pay a certain charge to go into london now because of like emissions and all the rest of it um they they are the people in westminster and, more, and the councils are more or less a complete war with us now um but I think the main thing I want to get across to anyone who watches this channel, you know, like you speaking out about these things, you know, all it takes is to kind of go, if you go somewhere, talk about these things to people. It, the to, even the total normies that kind of snigger at everything you have to say and, 
you know, fully dosed up and maybe even wearing a mask, you know, just calmly talk about it because what I realised when I drove away, that's planting seeds. Because if I drive around the country kind of planting a seed here and there, that person goes on to talk to someone else. You never know, she could be sat around with a family one day and they speak to their family and then, you know, everyone disperses off and it's more and more seeds being planted and it gets people aware of the potential for what's going to happen very soon and why the real intentions of why these people are in these hotels, this weird, bizarre process where they're all young men. You know, there's not many women and children in there, is there? You know. But yeah, so the main point being is just kind of don't underestimate the power of your voice and um, your tongue, you know, and speaking out. So, uh, yeah, that's that. Cheers.